right. This is uh, this comes under the heading, I guess, of it's about damn time, and it may be way too late. Um, but at least something is happening. Now, first, I saw this uh, tweet from Amy Siskind. And she has uh, quite a follower, uh, uh, quite a, a group of followers, of which I'm one. Uh, I'm not sure uh, who she is or what she does, but she has a definite um, um, position on, on, on Twitter, on the Twitter feed. And she wrote this. This was uh, this evening. She wrote, I've always felt Trump's downfall would be sharp and sudden. Most Republicans in Congress who have no true allegiance to him and are simply cowards will turn on him like lemmings when it serves their self-interest. The Christianity Today op-ed could be the start of the process. Now, when I read that, I thought, okay, and then I, I looked further in the Twitter feed and I found a lot of people were referencing this article in Christianity Today. Now, if you remember, that's a magazine that was founded by uh, the Reverend uh, Billy Graham. Um, the Reverend Billy Graham. And the, uh, the op-ed piece was written by Mark Galley, G-A-L-L-I. He's the editor-in-chief of Christianity Today. Now, I want to read to you what he wrote. Um, and I'm 99% I'm certain this is legit because I went to their website. ChristianityToday.com. The editorial is headlined, Trump should be removed from office. The subhead, it's time to say what we said 20 years ago when a president's character was revealed for what it was. He's referring to Clinton. This is what Mark Galley wrote. In our founding documents, Billy Graham explains that Christianity Today, now in founding documents, you're talking about the magazine, in our founding documents, Billy Graham explains that Christianity Today will help evangelical Christians interpret the news in a manner that reflects their faith. The impeachment of Donald Trump is a significant event in the story of our republic. It requires comment. The typical Christianity Today or CT approach is to stay above the fray and allow Christians with different political convictions to make their arguments in the public square to encourage all to pursue justice according to their convictions and treat their political opposition as charitably as possible. We want CT to be a place that welcomes Christians from across the political spectrum and reminds everyone that politics is not the end and purpose of our being. We take pride in the fact, for instance, that politics does not dominate our home page. That said, we do feel it necessary from time to time to make our own opinions on political matters clear, always, as Graham encouraged us, doing so with both conviction and love. We love and pray for our president as we love and pray for leaders, as well as ordinary citizens, on both sides of the political aisle. Let's grant this to the president. The Democrats have had it out for him from day one, and therefore nearly everything they do is under a cloud of partisan suspicion. This has led many to suspect not only motives, but facts in these recent impeachment hearings. And no, Mr. Trump did not have a serious opportunity to offer his side of the story in the House hearings on impeachment. But the facts in this instance are unambiguous. The President of the United States attempted to use his political power to coerce a foreign leader to harass and discredit one of the President's political opponents. That is not only a violation of the Constitution. More importantly, it is profoundly immoral. The reason many are not shocked about this is that this president has dumbed down the idea of morality in his administration. He has hired and fired a number of people who are now convicted criminals. He himself has admitted to immoral actions in business and his relationship with women, about which he remains proud. His Twitter feed alone, with its habitual string of mischaracterizations, lies, and slanders, 
is a near-perfect example of a human being who is morally lost and confused. Trump's evangelical supporters have pointed to his Supreme Court nominees, his defense of religious liberty, and his stewardship of the economy, among other things, as achievements that justify their support of the president. We believe the impeachment hearings have made it absolutely clear, in a way the Mueller investigation did not, that President Trump has abused his authority for personal gain and betrayed his constitutional oath. The impeachment hearings have illuminated the president's moral deficiencies for all to see. This damages the institution of the presidency, damages the reputation of our country, and damages both the spirit and the future of our people. None of the president's positives can balance the moral and political danger we face under a leader of such grossly immoral character. This concern for the character of our national leader is not new in CT. In 1998, we wrote this, quote, referring to Clinton, the president's failure to tell the truth, even when cornered, rips at the fabric of the nation. This is not a private affair, for above all, social intercourse is built on a presumption of trust, trust that milk your grocer sells you is wholesome and pure, trust that the money you put in the bank can be taken out of the bank, Trust that your babysitter, firefighters, clergy, and ambulance drivers will all do their best. And while politicians are notorious for breaking campaign promises while in office, they have a fundamental obligation to uphold our trust in them and to live by the law. End quote. And we also wrote this, quote, Unsavory dealings and immoral acts by the president and those close to him have rendered this administration morally unable to lead, end quote. Unfortunately, the words that we applied to Mr. Clinton 20 years ago apply almost perfectly to our current president. Whether Mr. Trump should be removed from office by the Senate or by popular vote next election, that is a matter of prudential judgment. That he should be removed, we believe, is not a matter of partisan loyalties, <coughs> but loyalty to the creator of the Ten Commandments. To the many evangelicals who continue to support Mr. Trump in spite of his blackened moral record, we might say this, remember who you are and whom you serve. Consider how your justification of Mr. Trump influences your witness to your Lord and Savior. Consider what an unbelieving world will say if you continue to brush off Mr. Trump's immoral words and behavior in the cause of political expediency. If we don't reverse course now, will anyone take anything we say about justice and righteousness with any seriousness for decades to come? Can we say with a straight face, that abortion is a great evil that cannot be tolerated, and with the same straight face, say that the bent and broken character of our nation's leader doesn't really matter in the end? We have reserved judgment on Mr. Trump for years now. Some have criticized us for our reserve. But when it comes to condemning the behavior of another, patient charity must come first. So we have done our best to give evangelical Trump supporters their due, to try to understand their point of view, to see the prudential nature of so many political decisions they have made regarding Mr. Trump. To use an old cliche, it is time to call a spade a spade. To say that no matter how many hands we win in this political poker game, we are playing with a stacked deck of gross immorality and ethical incompetence. And just when we think it's time to push all our chips to the center of the table, that's when the whole game will come crashing down. It will crash down on the reputation of evangelical religion and on the world's understanding of the gospel. And it will come crashing down on a nation of men and women whose welfare is also our concern. Mark Galley is the editor-in-chief of Christianity Today. Now, this, of course, while it is a very important statement made by the editor of Christianity Today, um, 
the the opening paragraphs you can well imagine I totally disagree with I think Trump had every opportunity to uh, participate in the impeachment inquiry and he said fuck you to it, to every single offer made by the Democrats to every subpoena issued by the Democrats Trump's answer was a consistent go fuck yourself so when Christianity to, uh, today says um, um, the Democrats have had it out for him from day one. Well, we have. Uh, well, the Democrats have, and so have most people who can think. Now, Christians, by their nature, don't think. They, they just don't. They follow what is thought and predigested for them. Now, oh, I realize they're by Bible study groups. These are not like rabbis, though. The Christians are not Jews. The Jews can sit around for hours arguing some minute point of Torah. These people don't, the Christians don't do that. They take their Bible. Some, some Sunday school superintendent or teacher uh, or, or preacher will predigest it and feed it to them, okay? So Christians are not thinkers, in my opinion, and, and I stand by that opinion because I have been in that cult. I was in that cult for a number of years. Uh, so they say Democrats have had it out for him from day one, and therefore nearly everything they do is under a cloud of partisan suspicion. Well, okay, but the partisan suspicion is based, God damn it, on the rule of law. If Trump were not a lawbreaker, there would not be partisan suspicion. But Trump has been a lawbreaker all his life. The editorial then says, This has led many to suspect not only motives, but facts in these recent impeachment hearings. What facts? See, it's these kinds of statements that, that so totally put me off of Christian editorial writers. And they conclude this part of it. And, and no, Mr. Trump did not have a serious opportunity to offer his side of the story in the House hearings and impeachment. What the fuck are you talking about? Every single offer was made. He wouldn't even talk to Mueller. So Christianity Today and Mark Galley, well, the, 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 the important part of, of your essay, your editorial, rings very true. This bit about he didn't have a chance. What the fuck are you talking about? He had every chance. And as far as Democrats or liberals or whatever you want to call people who realized that Trump was a goddamn gangster before he was elected and his behavior since has only proven that, why do you call that having it in for him? Of course we did. We knew what it was. If you Christian evangelicals wouldn't have been counting your beads, uh, well, that's what the Catholics do, but if you wouldn't have been just oh so thrilled that you had somebody like Trump who would have given you all blowjobs in order to get your votes, maybe you would have been paying attention to what a criminal son of a bitch he was to begin with. So, peace and love. Christianity Today. I used to sell your magazine, by the way. Peace and love to you all. I, I hope everything works out for you, and I appreciate 85% of your editorial. But the opening 15% is bullshit. And you said it yourself. If, if the Christians don't take a stand, you all are fucking up your, in, your nest. You're shitting in your own bed. That's what you're doing. Why haven't you come out in opposition to this bastard long before this? Okay. You have come out now. Good. Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcasts. You have your choice. You can listen to the ranting with the audio podcast or listen and watch me lose control with a video podcast subscription. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go.
And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com, and never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.